Hey everyone, I'm back and today we're going to be talking about Nosferatu and this movie came out in 1922 and it is a silent film, also a classic and this is my first time watching it and I've seen Nosferatu the Vampire from 1979 and after watching the original from 22 I also decided to rewatch the remake and it was interesting watching both of these movies back to back and what I liked about uh, the original is uh, the music. I uh, found it to be like a, a good uh, compliment uh, to uh, the film. It helped me uh, get into the movie. Uh, like it's nice in 1920s and it's uh, kind of interesting to watch it uh, just being pulled back in time. And it was an experience that I did enjoy. At parts, I enjoyed the first act uh, the most. Uh, or the first 30 minutes or however long of the movie. I was uh, really enjoying uh, just uh, how things were presented, and it was kind of goofy and a bit over the top at points, and I wasn't really minding how the movie was paced, because the film does kind of take its time. For a while, I wasn't annoyed by that. However, as the movie went along, it just started to get increasingly more boring to me. But I'll get into that... Uh, more later. There is a decent amount of elements to this film that I found to be charming and uh, at points it did feel like I was watching like a musical theater <laughs> from the performances and uh, the characters. Like it all felt a bit musical theatery to me at points which uh, I was getting some enjoyment out of and uh, I like the character of Nosferatu whenever he's on screen the movie works a bit better for me. I do like his design. It's pretty iconic. I'm sure most of you know what he looks like. I thought it was a cool design. And my favorite elements of this movie when it comes to the horror were the shadow shots. I thought that they were really cool and creepy and also creative. And I like that about the movie. And to get into my negatives with this movie, I didn't really find the characters to be interesting or memorable really at all. And that was a big problem that I had uh, with the movie. And because uh, I wasn't invested in anything in this movie, the second half of this movie really dragged for me. And I just was waiting for it to end. And eventually it did end. Uh, but there was nothing satisfying with anything that happened throughout the second half of the movie. I wasn't scared by anything. Like, I love the, the shadow shots, like I said earlier. But aside from that, I wasn't scared. I was just passively watching like things happen kind of but at a slow pace and after a certain point I did have to watch uh, this movie in two times speed <laughs> because I was just pretty bored and emotionally checked out and there's still things to, to appreciate about the movie but overall this is one of those movies where I do appreciate it more than I personally enjoy it and I am giving this movie credit for the limitations of the time because this movie did come out like a hundred years ago and you know you couldn't uh, do certain things uh, back then that you can do today but if it were to come out uh, today and it was made the exact same way then I would probably dislike it a lot more and uh, would feel that it should have been a short film that uh, was no longer than 40 minutes <laughs> is how I felt about it because a lot of it just felt really stretched out or kind of repetitive after a certain point in time. And to kind of talk about the remake a little bit, because I feel as though that's something that adds to the conversation a little bit. I do like how that movie updated a lot of what happened in the original story. And now we have color, we have dialogue, and we have sound. <laughs> And I feel as though those elements uh, helped that movie a lot and actually used filmmaking to really benefit to the movie a lot. And that movie, I feel as though, is actually kind of scary at points and made me feel fear. And the iconic scenes uh, from this movie, the original, were overwhelmingly a lot better in uh, the remake. And I just uh, found it... Uh, like, so much in that movie really scary at points, but also uh, having characters that I was interested to see and 
there were moments uh, where it did flesh out the characters and made them interesting and they had infer- interesting conversations and all of that uh, made it uh, great to watch and it was like a beautifully uh, shot movie as well <laughs> that's a movie that i could totally rewatch again whereas uh, this one i'm not really interested in watching again it's more of a i appreciate it i like that it exists but uh, that's about all I can respect it for. It's well made, but just not a movie that I personally connect with, unfortunately. So we have uh, this story done a lot better in the Nasratu the Vampire remake. And also, I don't know how this 2024 film is going to be, but I'm excited to see it and I want to see what it has to offer. <laughs> Whereas this one is a product of its time, and that's about all I have to say about it. So if you really want to check this movie out, go right ahead. It's not torture. It's just, for me personally, nothing memorable, because uh, we have better. (laughs) So with all that being said, I'm going to give Nosferatu, the original from 1922, a 5 out of 10. Thank you for watching my videos as always. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a like and comment down below you thought of Nosferatu and my social media links. They will all be in the description, so follow me there. And last but not least, subscribe to be a part of Fully Nation, and I'll see you when I get my next review up, and that is going to be for Brawl in Cell Block 99. So look forward to that, but until I get that up, thank you for watching and have a great day.